Hey there, kid. It's your good buddy, Uncle Ben. Hope everybody out there is doing well and staying healthy. We've got a lot of awesome questions that we're going to cover today that were all submitted by my loyal and lovely patrons who support my channel over on my Patreon page at patreon.com slash benellerguitars. And so should you, if you like things that are nice. This question comes from my Patreon supporter, Matthew Kennedy, who asks, how do riffs fit into chord progressions? Like if I'm playing in G and my chord progression is G, C, D, where do riffs fit into that? That is a really good question, and I like this one a lot because it allows us to get kind of creative, and it goes beyond me just showing you, you know, a lick to practice or whatever. It's a great thing to add into any song to build some structure, and in order to take a chord progression and turn it into riffs, it doesn't even take all that much theory per se, as long as you know a few basic tips. <laughs> Okay, so in your example you said you were in the key of G, and your chords were G major, C major, and D major. That's perfect because all three of those chords can be made out of the, the material of the G major scale. Notes of that being G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, and G. I'll put those on screen down there too. Now whenever I'm working in the confines of a single key, I kind of look at that note bank down there it's kind of like a seven ingredient pantry at like a kitchen or something, right? I can make anything I want to as long as it's made out of those seven ingredients. So that means when it's time to take these chords and turn them into riffs, any of those seven notes in the G scale is up for grabs. But it doesn't mean that all seven of those notes are always gonna sound good or that they will outline that chord progression the way that I want to. So you gotta go about this with a little bit of strategery. Okay, think about it this way. We got our note bank down here, right? Our seven ingredient pantry. The G chord is made up of three ingredients from that pantry, G, B, and D. It's root, third, and fifth. The C chord is made up of three ingredients, C, E, and G. That's what goes into a C chord. Meanwhile, the D chord is D, F sharp, and A. Now let's say I have a chord progression that uses those chords and I want to make a riff that really outlines that. Well, a good starting point is to look at that note pantry and select the notes that go from each chord and try to make a riff out of those. So for example, with the G chord, that's G, B, D, right? What if I try to make some kind of riff around those? G, B, D, right? See, I've got the G sliding into the B, there's my D, then back to the G. Then what if when it's time to go to the C chord, if I outlined the notes of that chord in the same way? C to E to G. Then when it's D chord time, I could go to D, F sharp, and A, back to D. Now I've made a riff that sounds like those chords. That kind of ended up sounding like the theme from Green Acres, if you know that one, so that might not be the vibe that you're going for here. You could also play around with moving through the scale in a similar fashion through all the chords. Here's what I mean. So like, let's say I was over the G chord. I was wanting to convey the sound of that G major, so I know I'm gonna be targeting the G, the D, and the B notes that are in that scale, right? Well, what if I had some kind of riff that went from the root to the fifth, and then I hit whatever note is next down in the scale before I go to the third, right? G, D, C, B. It can be something like... Something like that, right? Then what if I did the exact same idea, but from the C note in the scale? So I'm gonna go from its root note, C, to its fifth, G, play the next note down in the scale, in this case it's gonna be F sharp, where we get that cool Lydian kind of sound, and then I go to the next note down in the scale, which is that chord's third, E. Then when I go to the D chord, I'm gonna outline that one the same way. Root, fifth, next note down in the scale, happens to be a G, then down the next note in the scale, which is its third. Kind of a little bit more like number of the beast, like Iron Maiden y sounding, you know? If you wanted to go a little bit more alternative rock, like Manchester Orchestra or something like that, you could also turn those into some simple two note chords using root fifth, 
root and whatever's next down in the scale, and then root and third, right? For my C, that's gonna look like this. Because in the scale, there's that F sharp note right there, right? Then for my D, it'll have. You'll be picking up college chicks from the early 2000s in no time. At the end of the day, as usual, it's all about a train. At the end of the day, as usual, it's all about chord tones. And we could use the same approach to work with minor chords as well. And you've heard this all over like every surf rock song. So let's say we had something that was based around E minor, right? Well, an E minor triad, even regardless of whatever key it might be in, the notes of an E minor triad are gonna be the ones that we want to riff on to really capture the sound of that chord. The notes in an E minor triad are E, G, and B, which is why like in every surf song, somebody is doing this move. That's E, B, G, B, root fifth, flat third, fifth, right? That's why whenever a guitar player or a bass player plays that figure, it sounds like a distillation of that E minor chord, right? To give you an idea about how I've used this concept in my own music, several years ago I was playing in an instrumental, kind of heavy, progressive band called Arc. And we had a song called Sleep that featured a solo section that was really bizarre. I was playing over F sharp minor, A minor, E minor, and G minor. Those are four chords that do not belong in any key. It's kind of, I guess, black metal-y in a sense, but it sounded like this. Really fun to try to figure out how to solo over that shit. I'll put a link in the video description down there below so you guys can check out the full song over on our SoundCloud page. But we decided that before it got to the guitar solo part, there needed to be this kind of eerie, moody, sort of quiet build-up section. And so we decided to take those chords and write a riff out of them. So again, I was thinking, okay, F sharp minor, A minor, F sharp minor, A minor, and then E minor, G minor. Well, if I play the triads for all those, right? Root, flat third, fifth, there's the sound of F sharp minor. A, C, E, there's the sound of A minor. E, G, B, E minor. G, B flat, D. Those are the triads for each of those chords. Now, do I even have to care about what particular key each of them fit into? Not really. As long as I'm using those triads, I'm gonna convey the sound of that chord progression. So we came up with this riff that sounded something like this. And it was all based around those triads. It was a really fun band. I miss playing those tunes, and you can hear all of them over on the ARC SoundCloud page. It's just soundcloud.com slash official ARC. Still really proud of the music that we made in that group. So yeah, at the end of the day, whenever you're trying to turn a cool chord progression into some dope riffage, you can definitely look at the entire scale as a source of ingredients that you can pull from. But at the end of the day, if you're trying to really outline the sound of those chords, always be sure to pick out the chord triad notes that are hiding right there inside of the scale. My patron Kenny asks, have you listened to Revocation? If so, what do you think? They have amazing material for Weekend Wank Shop. I tend to agree with you, Kenny. Revocation is absolutely freaking awesome. And I actually got to know those guys while we were touring together many years ago. I think it was when I was playing fill-in lead guitar with Whitechapel. It might have been one of those tours, I think. Uh, but I got to know those guys out on the road and have stayed in touch with them ever since. And they're all freaking awesome. Dave Davidson, their lead guitar player and kind of primary songwriter guy, is an incredible guitar player. I love his really strong like jazz influence in his playing. And in fact, that's one of the first things I remember about Dave is like whenever I met him on tour and I'd hear him warming up backstage, he was never like 
shredding through scales with a metronome or anything like that. He was always playing like Stella by Starlight and like Autumn Leaves and you know just all these jazz standards and stuff like that. I was really surprised to hear him playing that way because I just didn't know that that was such a huge part of his playing. But after you know that and you listen to some revocation, it's like clear as day. He's a really amazing player and actually He's even helped out my own playing a lot. I've done some lessons with Dave. I hit him up last year and he gave me some really killer ideas about working on my improv and playing over chord changes and all that cool grown up shit. I recommend that you hit up Dave for some lessons too. I'll put his contact email on screen right there. Now we can hit up Dave and get schooled yourself. And let me know in the comments what revocation, solos, riffs, whatever you'd like to see broken down on a future installment of Weekend Wake Shop. Maybe I can even get Dave to contribute and be a part of the video. That's all for this episode. Thank you guys so much for watching and a huge thanks goes out to my Patreon supporters for submitting such awesome questions. If you want to get your question featured on a future installment of Fact You, be sure to support that Patreon page over at patreon.com slash Ben Eller Guitars. Now grab that guitar and go play nice.